teams, today we are addressing a theme that many of you have problems with, getting your robot to drive straight on the map. This is our robot. It consists of an NXT brick and two motors. It has two drive wheels and two sliding wheels. The two drive wheels are in the front and the two sliding wheels are in the back. It is very important to run your robot on the mat because the mat will be the material that your robot will be running on throughout the robotics season. This year's mat is a lot more cloth-like than last year's, so it's very important to run it only on this year's mat and not on last year's. We can show the difference by having a gear and a smooth piece that you can find underneath last year's bone ribbon, and you just attach the piece to the gear and you run it across the mat. And you'll find that this year's mat is very smooth, whereas if you run this across last year's mat, it would be very bumpy. In order to test our robot, we cleared off these two mission models so our robot would have a clear shot to the other side of the map, which is about two meters. Hello, we made a mark 15 inches from the edge of this wall on both sides of our mat so we could line our robot up. On our robot, we added this piece right here, which will help us center our robot to this line. And it, we need to center our robot with that end too. So we have this low power laser, which we bought from eBay, and we just line it up with that mark on the other side of the mat, and that's how we center it. We added our, this structure to our robot. It attaches from the back of the robot to the front of the robot, and it allows our laser to point straight across the mat. We made a target, which is in millimeters, which will help us tell how far our robot has veered off course after it's driven two meters. We've decided to run our robot ten times to see if there's a general direction which our robot veers. This is our first run, and we have a move lock, which is set to a power of 50. When we switch the drive wheels, our robot veered to the right instead of to the left. So we took the drive wheels off the robot and we connected them with an axle and a gear in the middle. And when the wheels are like this, um, they have a tendency to go right, so watch. And, when the, and then when we flip them over, they have a tendency to go to the left. As you can see, we have a lot of these wheels. We numbered each one with a small graphite dot so we can keep track of them. Our idea is to find, pair them up and find which ones work the best with each other. After testing, we found a set of wheels that matched pretty well together. Now that we have matched wheels, we will run our robot 10 more times to see if the performance improved. Believe it or not, just changing the wheels made the robot drive straighter. After 10 trials, we found that our robot veered 3 times to the right and 7 times to the left. And the average was 2.3 centimeters to the left which was better than last time's results, which were 5.3 centimeters to the left. This is our robot from last year. Notice that on the back, we have claws as sliders. Originally, we had claw sliders on our robot, but then we decided that we wanted to make our robot more compact, so we added this, which is just basically a gear with an axle through it and a smooth piece on the end. So once we added that, we noticed that our robot was constantly veering. Sliders can affect the motion of the robot if they are applying drag to the robot. If they cause a drive wheel to slip, the move lock will not be able to keep the robot on course. The move lock can only work to correct differences between motors if the wheels never slip on the mat. This is a small plastic wheel. This is a large plastic wheel. 
This is a claw slider. This is a small, smooth Lego piece. And this is a Lego ski. A way to test these sliders before you even put them on your robot is to see how well they slide across the map. This large plastic wheel, we're going to slide it in the direction of travel. So notice that it slides very well in the direction of travel, but if you were to turn it and slide it across in the perpendicular direction of travel, simulating a pivot, it doesn't slide very well. But notice this small plastic wheel goes well in the direction of travel, as well as perpendicular to the direction of travel. A pivot is when one wheel of your robot is moving forward and the other wheel is moving backwards. Notice that when we are pivoting, the robot sliders are offering resistance and they are traveling perpendicular to the, to the normal direction of travel. To find the sliders that are best for your robot, we recommend doing 10 trials of going straight and 10 trials of pivoting 90 degrees. Some sliders do well while driving straight, and but they're really bad at going at pivoting. And you may find that some sliders do well at pivoting, but are really bad at driving straight. We recommend that you get sliders that are good at both. Another thing to be concerned with is whether the motors are well matched. If the rotors aren't well matched, then the robot will tend to veer, and and that means that one motor is spinning faster than the other. Inside the move lock, there is an algorithm called the PID algorithm. The PID algorithm makes the robot drive relatively straight, even if the motors are mismatched. It does this by slowing down a motor that is moving too fast relative to the other motor. When moving forward, the PID algorithm is constantly adjusting the power to each motor in order to ensure both motors are staying in sync with each other. To demonstrate the PID algorithm, we programmed a move lock to move two meters. Watch what happens after I stop the wheel. When I stop this wheel, the other wheel stops too, to compensate for this wheel stopping. And when I let go, the wheels start moving again. It would be preferable to have matched motors on your robot, so that way you wouldn't have to rely on the PID algorithm within the move lock. This is good because your robot will be able to naturally drive straight. Here's an example of a simple program that can compare two motors. The motors are allowed to run for about 10 revolutions, and the rotation sensors built into the motor are red and displayed on the screen. The difference between how many degrees each motor rotated is also displayed. If the motors were perfectly matched, the difference would be zero. If they are not, the difference would be a sign number indicating how far off in degrees one motor was with respect to the other. These two blocks right here, they reset rotation sensors for motor B and C. And these two blocks here are motor blocks, which turn the motors on at a power of 50. Um, this is a rotation sensor block, and it reads rotation sensor B and writes it into a variable called rot B. And the same here for rotation sensor C. Then rot B is converted to, from number to text and displayed on line 1 on the screen. And the same thing here for rotation sensor C. Then rotation sensor C is subtracted from rotation sensor B, and that number is turned from a number to text and displayed on the screen. Then rotation sensor B, if it's greater than 3600 degrees, it will exit out of the program. And this block here will stop um, the motors from running, and this block here will prevent, um, will make it so that you can press the NXT button and see the numbers on the screen. Here we are running the program with the robot suspended in the air. As you can see, the motors are not perfectly matched because the number on the third line of the display, which shows the difference between the two motors, is not zero. You can swap in and out different motors to find your best pair. Running our software with the robot in the air proved that this motor runs faster than this motor, which will cause our robot to have a general tendency to veer left. 
We are conducting 10 trials with, to find the average difference in degrees that the motors rotated after traveling 2 meters. We are not using the motor block which contains the PID algorithm which corrects for motor imbalances. Therefore we are determining the actual difference between the motors and we are conducting these tests at a power of 50. We are conducting the first of our 10 trials. Since we know that our right motor is stronger than our left, we expect our robot to veer to the left. After traveling two meters, we found that our robot's rotation sensors were 22 degrees off, resulting in it being eight set, veering 8 centimeters to the left. After 10 trials, our results showed us that our robot's motors on average are 22.5 degrees off. This causes an average veer to the left of 8.13 centimeters. Hopefully we can find a set of two better matched motors. Again, remember that we are ne not using the PID algorithm. Because our coach is a LEGO fanatic, we actually have 17 NXT motors but 15 are shown here. But comparing them all two at a time would be impractical. We developed another method of characterizing each motor individually. We measure the time it takes for each motor to execute 10 revolutions. We do this at power levels 25, 50, 75, and 100, both in forward and reverse. We started by putting serial numbers on each one of the motors so we could tell them apart. Then we made a program that automatically tests each motor at four speeds, forward and reverse, and recorded the eight time measurements on the display. Once we had data for all 17 motors, we compared them in an Excel spreadsheet to help us identify motors that are closely matched. We're hoping that this method will help us find motors that are well matched over a range of speeds as well as in forward and reverse. Obviously, after, we have, after our spreadsheets help us identify two well matched motors, we will test them using the robot on the mat. Here is our motor testing rig in action. We clamped each motor to the table to hold it securely for the duration of the test. Last year, we determined that testing motors with nothing attached to them wasn't a good test because motors that seemed very close with no load could behave very differently when they were actually running together on a robot. This year, we attached an axle and two wheels to the motor to load it down somewhat. We're hoping this will better approximate the loading that the motor would experience when running on a mat as part of a robot. Our program automatically tests each motor in the following order. In the forward direction, we use powers 25, 50, 75, and 100. Then in the reverse direction, we test powers 25, 50, 75, and 100. Therefore, we test each motor under eight different conditions. Our program does three trials and computes the average of these trials for each of the eight test conditions. The result of each test are printed on the NXT display on consecutive lines. Between each trial, we pause for a couple seconds to let the motor come to a complete stop. After each motor was tested, we monitored the battery voltage. If the voltage dropped below 8.4 volts, we would charge the battery. As the battery voltage drops, the motors will slow down. So in order to achieve the consistent results, it is important that all testing is done with the battery close to full charge. The first line of the NXT display corresponds to running the motor at power 25 in the forward direction. In this case, it took 13.2 seconds for the motor to finish the 10 revolution test. The other seven numbers correspond to the other 10 test conditions. Note the numbers displayed are in milliseconds. Here are the results after testing all 17 motors. It's a bit complicated to compare them since there are so many data points. For example, one pair of motors could be really well matched at a power of 50, but horribly matched at a power of 100. We came up with a method to compare one motor against every other motor using a weighted sum of each of the test conditions. We selected the motors that seemed to be the best match according to our test results. Our experience is that if you choose matched wheels, good sliders, and well-matched motors, your robot will perform reliably. We are looking forward to a fun and exciting FLL year. Our team wishes you good luck in the coming season. If you liked our video, please comment, rate, and subscribe.